Let's go back a year ago. <clears throat> First spring training, right? So you're settling into Glendale, Arizona. If I had sat down with you and told you nine months from now, Dave, you're going to be the National League Manager of the Year, you would have said what? I would have said you're, uh, you're right. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I love no. it. I love it. <laughs> no, I uh, honestly, that was just so not on my radar. Yeah. You know, last year, uh, coming from San Diego as a bench coach and then being hired and going through that arduous process and being named manager of the Dodgers, it's like you get caught up in the process and trying to go through it, but then when you take a little step back and you go, I'm the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and it's sort of crazy. Um, and so at that point in time, you're just trying to build relationships and try to create a culture and the challenges, because this team had already won three division championships in a row. Um, but for me, the coaches doing things the right way and trusting a certain process was really important. So to kind of foresee being in this chair right now, crazy. Now, the Dodgers set a record, at least as far as they've tracked this last year, for the number of players on the disabled <laughs> list in a season. I know we're, we're all sick of hearing that. And you're as positive as anybody out there. And you kept on being positive through all of this. But... Be honest, was there a moment last year where those injuries kept piling up? This includes Clayton Kershaw, missing two months, where you thought to yourself, man, oh man, this one, this might be the one that's tough to get over here. Yeah, I, I think that the Kirsch injury was, uh, was a real tough one. Uh -huh. And I think it's one of those things that my wife heard a lot of, you know, my whining maybe. Um, <laughs> but, you know, once you show up every day, it's a new day and... The players got to believe and you got to be consistent with your attitude. So me, the coaches, um, we show up every day fresh and, and ready to win one baseball game. So I think that the ability for us to simplify things in the course of 162 games, not counting the postseason, to win one game, I think that kind of allowed us to overcome a lot of the adversities. And obviously, I think everyone here saw some crazy things I did last year. And we saw the video taking guys out of no-hitters and perfect games, but <laughs> I had my reasons, and it was for the Dodgers, and um, so uh, that's kind of how we sort of got through it. The voice they read that with, you, know, you took Rich Hill out of a perfect game. It was, like, it was like a highlight reel for you. I don't think you view it as such. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I had one of my good buddies in Miami at that time, and you know, Richie was going through a blister all year long, and trying to manage him through the starts and pushing starts back to get him through it. And he's just such an amazing competitor. And so as he's going through this perfect game in Miami, um, I had planned to win a baseball game, go have some cocktails and, and enjoy the night <laughs> with my buddy. And so we're going through this game. And so the blister keeps getting worse, but he's throwing really well. And the trainer's in my ear saying, hey, heads up on this blister. You know, it could go at any time. And if this happens, then... We don't know how long Richie's going to be out for, so I'm just looking at this player, and every time he goes to the dugout, I'm kind of fish-eyeing him, and he doesn't want to look at me because he knows what <laughs> yeah, I'm right, kind of right. thinking. So then it gets to, like, the sixth inning, and he just walks past me, goes underneath the tunnel, and he's like, Doc, I'm not coming out of this game. And I'm like, man, you're pitching your tail off, man. Keep going, keep going. How do you feel? And he doesn't want to show me his finger. And then the seventh inning comes around, and... <laughs> It just, it, I just had to pull the plug on him, and uh, there was a little scene in the dugout, but he's a competitor, and that's what you expect. But, you know, what I've told the guys is any decision I make is for the Dodgers, and I think that if I let him go and he blows that blister, I still got to get six outs, and he can't pitch through the postseason. I think that I've compromised everyone in the organization's chances to win a championship. So he ultimately, we kissed and made up, and he came back <laughs> on a nice little three-year deal. So, um, so it worked out for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, yeah. So I made sure I stayed off social media that night, yeah, and uh, right. I couldn't get up feel fast enough, and the media was just like right in my in my my office. So. That was brutal, so I drowned my sorrows that night. Let's uh, talk about something a little easier. It's not just baseball. I know you're a wine guy, too. Pretty Absolutely. serious wine guy. Yeah, there's a lot of wine people I here. see there's some wine in the nice. house tonight. Uh, less than there was when we started the night. Co-owner of Co -owner, a wine. Yeah. Tell us about that. No, it, it's kind of one of those things that as a baseball player, um, you're so consumed with whatever you do. And I kind of found myself as that guy. 
And so um, as I went into coaching and managing, I was that same guy. So I needed something to, as my wife says, be present. And so food and wine was the only thing that I guess, outside my kids, yeah. made me be present. So um, once I was playing baseball, um, I decided to get into this industry at some capacity. So Rich Aurelia, John Meisk, another friend of mine, started Red Stitch Wine. So uh, we love it. It's a passion of ours. And uh, keep drinking the red wine. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a year ago. How about a year from now, you and I come back up here and celebrate moment number one at Dodger World Series. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> After we win it this year, that'll be uh, moment number one. That sounds good to me. For now, though, how about the LA Sports Council Coach of the Year for 2016, Dave Roberts. Thank you. Thank you.